Welcome to another furry episode full of cats and kittens. It's just really lively. They're so cute when they're eating, aren't they? Yeah. We'll be following daring tales of moggy rescues. I've not had one of these before. And heart-stopping stories of bravery and kindness from the professionals. Steady, steady, steady. Good boy, we're going to get you. you can do. I give you a hug? Of course you can give me a hug. And cat-loving members of the public willing to give our favourite felines another chance at life. I cried when I first saw him. I thought he was the cutest little thing in the world. And I'll be back at some of the country's busiest animal hospitals to experience firsthand what life is like treating ill and injured moggies. I'm just going to check her temperature. She might not like this very much. No, I don't think it's anyone's no, favourite event of the funny. day. In today's show... Hello, beautiful. It's double trouble for Inspector Hershey Bowl as she picks up two litters of unwanted kittens. Those eyes have ulcerated completely, I'd say. Oh, it's just awful to look at, you know? Come here. Animal collection officer Matt Brown steps up to rescue a cat on a telegraph pole. Look what trouble you're causing here, cat. Boom. OK, Ocean, good luck. See you on the other side, all right? And I'm back in the operating theatre as a cat called Ocean has some pretty radical ear surgery. Is there going to be a lot of bleeding? There is. That's the problem with ear oh, surgery. Right. There's quite a lot of bleeding there. <laughs> Hooray! No one could deny that kittens are cute little fur balls, but they also need looking after properly. Regular feeding and litter changes and a constant supply of entertainment. Mm, I know some humans a bit like that. In Birmingham, Inspector Hershey Bowl is on her way to investigate a complaint from a member of the public about some kittens being sold online. These kittens are allegedly around five weeks old, but that they're being sold on a site for eight weeks old. So that's, that's really bad. It's sort of premature to, to, to be going away. It can be ever so frustrating to see kittens being sold online. The issue of unwanted cats and kittens is one that's actually become a problem and, and increased every single year that I've been an inspector. It's almost like a throwaway society with kittens and cats now, and neutering is the absolute key. Hello, do you have a cat? Mm. It's had some kittens? Mm. The owners allow Hershey in to have a look at the cat and kittens who are out in the garden. Oh, hello, kittens. Three, OK. Hello, beautiful. No, no. Happily, the kittens look older than the five weeks reported. You're saying they're about seven? Well, they're eight now. Did you, did you, your mum's saying they're eight? Yeah. OK. How many did you have altogether? How many did she five. have? She had five, so have you sold two? Yeah. And how much did you sell them for? Uh, 50 pounds. 50 pounds for the, a white kitten? Yeah. And what about the other one? Uh, 20 pounds. OK, so that's 70 pounds. Yeah. So you have more than enough money to get the cat neutered now? Yeah, yeah. Would you not say? Yeah, no, yeah. Do you get what I mean? Yeah, no, yeah. I mean, the kittens are absolutely lovely. You know, they're fine. At eight weeks old, these kittens can now be parted from mum, and they're lucky to be in good health. Living in an outbuilding before they're old enough to be vaccinated leaves them more vulnerable to parasites like fleas, as well as the deadly cat flu virus. Hello. But how's mum cat looking? Is this your baby? Hello. Hello. What's, her, what's her name? Moza. Moza. So she is thin. I mean, to be honest, these are quite nice and healthy. They're not thin or anything, but she's lost a lot of condition. You can see that, yeah, yeah because of it. Mosa needs a bit of feeding up, but though it's not illegal, her, she is more worried about her babies still being up for sale. The only thing I'm concerned about is this whole issue of being, them being on a site that's really not meant to be for animals, and I'd wish they'd rather go to rehoming centres. I'll ask it you this way. The people that you're going to rehome it to, yeah. do you know that they're going to neuter, vaccinate, worm and deflea and microchip those kittens? Not all of them. Exactly, yeah. yeah? I can guarantee that whoever has those kittens will neuter, microchip, worm, deflea and do everything for them. And then the people that will come will be home-checked as well mm -hmm. to have those kittens. Yeah. Because surely, I can see that you really care about them. And you would be heartbroken if you knew that they went to a rubbish house, wouldn't you? But you wouldn't know that, would you? Because you don't know the people that are coming. Seems Hershey's words have struck a chord with the family. I know. Basically, your mum wants me to take them, yeah? 
She wants me to take the kittens? Yeah. I'll take a contact number for you. I'll give you a call in the morning, okay. yeah? In the, in the meantime, then, in the morning, I can store some space for them. I think I know where they're going to go. He's going quite high, isn't he? Yeah. Look at him, he's up to no good, he is. It can be extremely rewarding for me when I can persuade them to make the right decision to sign that animal over, because what I know is that once that's done, the future of that animal is secured. She's very sweet, aren't you? I'll see you tomorrow, then. But the following day, as Hershey heads back to collect the healthy kittens, she receives an emergency call about another litter. We've had an urgent collection of a mother cat and five kittens. It's a stray cat that's coming to Carl's garden, giving birth. The kittens appear to have swollen eyes and uh, they appear to be sticking out. From the sounds of it, it sounds like cat flu, uh, which, you know, is, is really quite uh, lethal in kittens. It's possible that Hershey's worst fears about kittens living outside are just about to be realised. Did you know that just like us, cats can get sunburned? This is especially common in white cats with pink ears and noses. And also, just like for us, sunscreen can help prevent it. Today at Putney Animal Hospital, I'm meeting 10-year-old Ocean, whose sun exposure has given her what looks like the early signs of skin cancer. So her owners have brought her in for an operation. Hey, Ocean. I hear you've been in the wars with your poor old ears. Yep. Left out the facts of 50 again, you sun worshipper, you. We'll try and make it better. Obviously, I won't, because I've got no idea what to do. But someone who knows will. Hello. And here come the experts now. Vet Laura and Nurse Linnea. Come on, then, let's take you out. Let's... Come on, me, Joe. Hello. Out of the two, the most severe changes are this um, right ear. Right. So, so can you see how they are a bit more thickened? And they have sometimes, that this is actually quite common, they have these black beads as well. Right. And, and they fold. Basically, they are quite thickened. This normally affects typically cats that are like completely white, and it can affect um, all the skin, mainly the skin and, uh, and the ears, and also the nose, and in the mouth as well, they can get quite nasty tumours. So is that a bit like being kind of a, a red-haired, fair-skinned person? You're more susceptible to sunburns? So... Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, this one as well, you can see that there's a little bit of thickening here. Yeah, funnily enough, I couldn't really notice it before, but now I yeah. look closer, you can see they're not as fine, are they? Sores and thickened tissue on the ears can be early signs of an aggressive cancer. Ocean's best chance of surviving is to have her ears amputated. No, poor Ocean. Ocean needs some hair clipped to prep her for surgery. I don't think she likes it much. I think I'd be making that noise as well. In fact, I probably have on quite a few occasions. <laughs> OK, Ocean, good luck. See you on the other side, all right? Don't hold it against any of us. And after a quick clip round the ear, it's my favourite part of the job, the hat. I've got a wedding coming up, Linnea, so I think I might. What yeah, do you think? I think? I think that's very, like, ascot-like. Yeah, so absolutely. I think you fit in fine. With a little bit of a fascinator yeah. coming out the top. Yeah. Anyway, back to the job in hand. Is there going to be a lot of bleeding? There is. That's the problem with ear oh, surgery. Right. There's quite a lot of bleeding there. <laughs> Hooray! If you're not that fond of surgical procedures, best look away now. So that's where you're going to cut, is it? That's right. So that yes. is pretty dramatic, that is, isn't it? It's like a lot of the ear. That's right. I don't know why I thought it was going to be a little bit off the tip. Mm. I mean, you could do that, really, but, I mean, this is maximising his chances of, of uh, being OK and yeah. you know, surviving. Well, you know, okay. people say that cats gauge how to get through small spaces mm -hmm. with the tips of their ears. Yes. So does that mean Ocean's not going to be able to work out whether he can get through a little tiny window now? Um, he still has got his whiskers around, which I left. He still has got other things around his face that can help him to do that. Yeah. What's that yes. noise? Basically, yes, that's telling me that um, it's working. Oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> Beware surgery phobes, 
That's the sound of a cauterizing tool, which means... It smells like a bit like a smoky barbecue now, Joe. Like a what? Smoky barbecue, you know. Oh, okay. oh lovely. <laughs> OK, so we're going to cut with scissors, because when, when I cut with scissors, also cauterize it at, at, at the same time, so we'll be controlling the, the bleeding as we go. Right. But you can see, can you see that little white bit here, no, Joe? No, I really don't want to see the little I, white oh, bit. Oh, there. right, OK. <laughs> we'll spare you the white bit, otherwise known as the ear cartilage, which means that Laura has almost finished cutting off the first ear. OK, so we have to... Do you want to see the oh ear, Oh, my God, Joe? you're holding Ocean's I'm holding ear. ear. You want That's to see it? It's like being in some weird horror film. <laughs> it is. Yeah, go on, let's have a look. It's like Reservoir Cats, isn't it? <laughs> it is. <laughs> He's not bleeding a lot. I'm glad to hear it. Just the last part of the process to go, the stitching up. Why do you stitch it? Is it for the appearance of it, or does it need to be stitched first? It, it needs to be. So we're trying to make what, what nature would do, which is to close it, because otherwise it would get really infected. So this is the last one, Joe. Now Laura moves on to the other ear. It might look drastic, but it is all for Ocean's own good. And despite having both ears removed, it won't affect her hearing too badly, as she'll still have her ear canals. That's everything finished, then? Yes. What a brilliant job. We'll catch up with Ocean later and see her reunited with her owners. In Birmingham, Inspector Hershey Bowl is on her way to collect three healthy kittens that have been living in an outbuilding. But she's just been diverted to an emergency call about another outdoor litter she suspects has cat flu. So the call is about um, a mother cat and her kittens and that the kittens are poorly with, uh, with you know, really runny eyes. I deal with so many unwanted cats and kittens, and it's the kittens that you see that are suffering from all sorts of diseases that are completely preventable. It's extremely upsetting for any of us to deal with. Hello, RSPCA. You yeah. called about some kittens? Yeah. The caller, Hamas, has a stray cat and kittens living in his garden. And now they've got a bit sick, have they? Hello, is this Mum? Hello, Mum. OK, let's have a look. Did she have them in here, did she? Oh, dear. Yeah, you're really bad, aren't you? Oh, sweetheart. Oh, sweetheart. With the first two looking very ill, hopes aren't high for the rest of the litter. So they've got something, I think, called cat flu. Yeah. OK, it's nothing you can catch, don't worry. Um, but, yeah, their eyes are really badly swollen. Do you need to try and round them up? Yeah. In there, is it? Hey, darling. OK, OK, OK. I know, I know. Oh, come on, darling. You're a bit bigger as well. Cat flu can take hold incredibly quickly, but there's a ray of hope for one of them at least. Hershey rounds up the remaining kittens. Oh, there's two here. OK, sweetheart, got you. It's all right, it's OK, it's OK. Aha, uh -huh, and got you as well. Perfect. Right, how much? We've got all five now, cos it'd be a nightmare not to take them all. It's, so, it's not looking very good for these. Oh, that one's eyes. Their ah. eyes are... Those, those eyes have ulcerated completely, I'd say. So that's... Oh, it's just awful to look at, you know? Cat flu is a horrendous disease that, you know, very young kittens can get and literally it can kill them. It will do horrendous damage to their eyes. It is the worst kind of pain that you could think that a kitten could go through. So, you know, it is one of those really upsetting things to see. Thank you so much. Thanks for, um, for calling and we'll do what we can with these, all right? The prognosis for these poor kittens isn't good, so Hershey's plan is to get them to a vet as soon as possible. I'm going to put these in this side. See, I need to barrier them slightly because I've, I'm picking up some other kittens, and the other kittens that I'm picking up, they're healthy. Okay. The healthy kittens Hershey is collecting are eight-week-olds who were being advertised for sale online. They were living in an outbuilding and have been lucky enough to avoid contracting any serious health issues. The owners have since agreed to sign them over to the charity. We're not there to dictate to people. It isn't a law. I can't stop people from having kittens. 
I can't make them new to their animal. But what we're trying to say to them is, please just think about this, be sensible. Hello, you OK? Inside, there's a surprise for Hershey. It's not just these adorable kittens that are being signed over. She'll be taking their one-year-old mum too. Right, let me grab... I'll need to grab two baskets then. But Hershey already has five kittens in the van, so has she got enough space for her? I might be able to get them all in here, actually. Mum and kittens in here. Problem solved. The owners have made the right decision, and now Mum Mosa and her three kittens can hopefully find themselves new homes. Good girl. They'll all go to the vets and they'll all get checked, OK? She'll get vaccinated. Thank you. I am grateful, honestly. No, genuinely. Thank you. These lucky, healthy kittens are placed in a separate compartment of the van from the sick ones. And with her cargo of eight kittens and one cat, Hershey heads for the animal hospital. In Liverpool, animal collection officer Matt Brown has just had a call about a stranded cat, and he's got a sense of deja vu. Cat stuck on the top of a telegraph pole, I'd say, one the other day in Bootle. It's like buses, isn't it? You know, you get one cat stuck up on top of a telegraph pole, and then a few days later, another one. If you get a cat stuck somewhere and it's dead awkward, you've got a second guess why you're going to do it. Now, how the, how the hell am I going to get that cat? from there. There he is. Mm. Hi, pal. Second one of the week, this. Really? Yeah. We got in 8 o'clock this morning. We were already there. Then. Yeah. We could have been there all night. All night. Not. Yeah. Sounds. It's not just a case of how I'm going to get it. It's what, what equipment can I get this cat with? And we don't have a lot in our little vans. If it jumps into the tree, it's OK, but there's yeah. a spiky railing on the That's what I'm worried about, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. He was quite quiet and settled early on, he's getting more and more stressed. Yeah, he's getting fed up now, isn't he? Well, I'll just do, I'll get the ladders up. I've got a net there, and I'll net it, try and net it. OK. It's a long way for a cat to fall, so Matt will be hoping it doesn't panic before he can reach it. I'm going to go up, hopefully direct it away from all these spikes. And then, if he doesn't jump, I'll net him and take it from there. She's looking, wondering, what are these going to try? Come here. Go on. Get in here. Can you pass us that pole, please? If at first you don't succeed, Prod it with a pole. Look what trouble you're causing here, cat. Come. Get in. Oh, behave yourself. <laughs> got him, but I'm going to have to bleed and think. Easy, tiger. You've got him. Nice. Just, you've got the pole. Right. Is the pole? I'm not going to take him to the vet. Because he's quite lively anyway. And he wants to get off, so he's not injured. So there's no point me taking him to a vet. Ready? Steady? My lovely coat is now ruined. Now I need to go in the wash. I'm in net, knackered. Thank <laughs> God it's Friday. That's all I can say. Yeah, it's quite a good job. And it's gone. Never got thanks, but you never do. So yeah, it's a good job, really. And knowing your luck, Matt, there'll be another one like it just round the corner. Coming up, Inspector Rosie Russon meets a Persian cat with a severely matted coat. Got you. Hey. There we go. And one little kitten has to face the dreaded needle for a blood test. She's cooperative for cuddles. We'll see if she's cooperative with needles. Well, exactly. I'm cooperative for cuddles, but not for needles. Long-haired cats with their lustrous locks, like Bilbo here, may look very nice to their owners. Problem is, their little paws can't handle a hairbrush. 
In Kent, Inspector Rosie Russon is heading back for a follow-up visit to the owner of a Persian cat. Someone in the local area has called in that the cat is um, quite badly matted. Now, we visited the cat about a couple of weeks ago and I left an advisory notice with the owner to actually have the cat dematted. She's obviously had to think about it and she's now phoned up asking if we'd come and collect the cat and um, she wants to sign the cat over for rehoming. Some, some occasions, uh, the best thing you can do for that animal is have the owner sign that animal over to you. We'd like to work with these people and get them to sort of correct the problem first, but if it's not going to happen or they can't offer what that animal needs, then, yes, we'll get them signed over and those animals will go on to have a great life. You want to sign Dorothy over? The owner signs the paperwork to hand Dorothy over to the charity. The problem is the cat doesn't like to have its belly stroked and uh, to be groomed, so she copes with the top half of the cat, but unfortunately she struggles with the belly. Because of her mats, Dorothy looks like she's been dragged through a hedge backwards, literally. Obviously, the important thing, firstly, is to get the cat dematted on this occasion. Dorothy's outside, and it's up to Rosie to try and catch her. Come here, mate. If you're going to adopt a cat, um, you need to consider how much time have you got to give to that animal. So if you're going to have a long-haired cat, you need to realise you need to spend a lot more time grooming that cat. Got you. Hey. There we go. Even the best owner from time to time may have to take their cat to a groomer and have it groomed um, just to help out the cat's coat. Yeah, she, I mean, the owner was fine. I think she's realised that um, it's going to be an ongoing problem where she has to keep getting, the, getting help to have the cat dematted. I think she's decided it's probably better it goes to someone who can help and sort of deal with those problems. Dorothy's matted coat needs urgent treatment to avoid attracting the flies and causing her any more nasty wounds. So she's been brought to vet Bruce McCleary for dematting under sedation. Now she's got unfortunately quite a lot of mats here, especially around the ears and going down the front over there. We've got a nasty little wound where she's actually caused that herself, trying to pull the mat off because the mat would have been so uncomfortable for her. Let's turn you around. You look at Katie, little one. There we go. Gosh, but she's matted underneath. So underneath there, I think, unfortunately, Dorothy, we're just going to have to shave everything off because you are very, very matted. Dorothy's matted fur must be causing her a huge amount of discomfort. We'll catch up with her later. For adult cats, fleas can be an itchy nuisance, but for kittens, it's a lot more serious. The little blighters can literally suck the life out of them, as these fur balls who were brought into Harmsworth Animal Hospital a few weeks ago found out. Luckily, after being defleed, two of them recovered quickly, but the smallest female has needed special monitoring to make sure she bounces back to health. She's now in the care of vet Sam Fevy and nurse Victoria Laslett. So, who do we have here? Little Kitten, as you can see. Is that, is that their name at the moment, <laughs> Little yeah, Kitten? That's little okay. Kitten. It's one of three, and they arrived in a really, really bad condition, like really, really lethargic, really underweight. It's because they were covered with fleas. Oh, that was sucking the... That oh, was OK. sucking their blood. And the prognosis was really not good. And actually, they were really anemic. So low red blood cells in their, in their, in their blood. Can that be life-threatening? Yes, it can be life-threatening because uh, when they have like really low red blood cells, they become really weak, they stop heating and they can die. I didn't know fleas could be lethal. You just tend to think of growing up. Yeah, cats exactly. So they were quite lucky. She was still anemic last week. Right. So we are just monitoring that and we are checking like every week that it's getting better. Which means it's blood test time for the little kitten. We'll see if she's going to be cooperative or not. Little one, hello. Hi, darling. Oh, she's very sweet. Would you describe her so far as being cooperative? She's cooperative for cuddles. We'll see if she's cooperative with well, noodles. Well, exactly. I'm cooperative <laughs> for cuddles, but not for noodles. All right, darling, so let's see. So if, like me, you're not a fan of sharp needles, look away now. How much do you need? I would need a point three, it would be great, but brave girl. You're getting there. Brave I'm girl. getting there, yeah. Brave girl. Well done. Well, well done, that's amazing. 
I think the brave little girl has earned a proper name. Uh, well, I noticed you called her Lucky. Have you got any other cats called Lucky? Because she has been lucky in the sense that she's... Um, she's know, lucky, definitely. Either that or Anne Widdicombe. What would you okay, prefer? OK, I'll go for, for Lucky, then. OK. <laughs> <laughs> OK. All right, All Lucky, right. well Thanks done. Time. time to find out just how lucky she is with a lab test on the red cell levels in her blood. So, right. let's run this blood. OK. Hopefully, with a healthy diet and no fleas, she's back up to a normal level. We're just going to take the blood in this little tube there. It's going up. Huh? Oh, that's good. So it travels up the tube, yeah. does it? I'm just going to seal it, OK? Yeah. To make sure it doesn't get out. I might get a few of those as Christmas presents. <laughs> <laughs> full of blood or with the blood? Yeah, or full it? of blood. Mum, look what I bought you. I always knew you were a vampire, Mum. Sam prepares four samples for the centrifuge machine, which separates blood into its main components. Red cells, white cells, platelets and plasma. The machine spins the blood at high speed, causing the heavier element, the red blood cells, to travel to the bottom of the tube. Clever, eh? All right, so that's our little tubes. OK. OK, and you can see now that the red bit is just at the bottom. Right. OK, right. so that's the red blood cells. OK, so yeah, they are all packed at the bottom. OK. And you've got the plasma that is a really clear oh, part. Oh, I see. Right, okay. yeah. I can only so that's see separated that. because your blood initially, they are all mixed together, but now they are like that. Now Sam needs to find out the levels of red cells that are in Lucky's blood. A healthy cat's levels should be 35 or above. Yeah. So the top of the blood at 100% over there. And then I'm going to move around to get the top of the red blood cells here. And then I can read. And it's just below 30% on this cat. Yeah. So that's a lot better. Last week it was 20% only. Oh, that's so brilliant. So that's so going higher going up. up. So Good. we are quite happy with that. So I think we can plan to neuter her next week. And then, end of next week, she should go to a rearming centre. So that would be great for her. OK, OK. Oh, Happy ending. It's brilliant news for Lucky. She certainly lived up to her name. In Birmingham, Hershey Bowl has a van full of kittens she's collected from two different addresses. One litter of three are healthy and, after a vet check, will be sent for rehoming. But most urgently in need of attention are five who are showing symptoms of cat flu, which, for kittens, can be fatal. She's brought them to the animal hospital to find out if anything can be done. Vet nurse Sarah Binns is first to see them. These kittens, then, um, picked up in a member of the public's garden and, as you can see, um, quite bad cat flu in quite a few of them. I'm just going to pick up the worst one, actually, because I think this is a... Come here, my sweetheart. Come here. Oh, God. I know, this is as, as, as kind of awful as, as it gets, really, isn't it? That is horrific. Pretty shocking. <laughs> I know. That's the worst I've seen in a while. Yeah, me too. Vet Aideen Murphy gives her prognosis. This is so severe that we wouldn't be able to do anything to help this kitten, unfortunately. Yeah. And the kindest thing for his welfare is to put him to sleep. Yeah. And this because that's now probably done permanent damage to those eyes, isn't it? Most likely. Yeah. That they'd be non-salvageable. Okay, so I'll, I'll let you take that one in the back then, Aideen. Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. The sorry story continues with the next three kittens. But there's one kitten left to examine. This one, I'd say, is probably the best one. He's shown severe ocular signs, mild nasal signs, and then he's the tongue ulcer as well. OK. So overall, yes, between moderate to severe cat flu. OK. Just cleaning away any of the nasty debris that he's got around his eyes just to make him feel a bit more comfortable. Great. This will make him feel a bit fresher, I guess, yeah? yeah? Just a bit happier. Oh, dear. The kitten's eyes are nowhere near as bad as his litter mates, but he's not out of the woods yet. So, in terms of um, treatment, then, I mean, so he's obviously got mild to severe, so it's, 
it's a 50-50 really, I guess, is it? Um, As to whether he responds to treatment? Yeah, I think the fact that he's hydrated and bright should be hopeful that he'll respond to treatment. OK. And within the next 24 to 48 hours, we'll get a better idea. Perfect. The kitten needs antibiotics and lots of fluids. And as the cat flu virus is very contagious, he'll need to be kept in isolation until he's better. Hershey may have lost four kittens, but she's just grateful that one of them has a chance of survival. We do have one which wasn't as bad, and um, certainly that one's going to get treatment, get some antibiotics and, and some eye drops. And, you know, I'm just hopeful that that one's going to survive. But, you know, it is really sad that um, these kittens were just too far gone uh, to, to have any treatment, really. And, uh, you know, they've been suffering for a long time. And, you know, the only comfort that I can get from the whole thing is that they're not suffering anymore. Fingers tightly crossed for the surviving kitten. We'll see how he's doing later. It's been five hours since 10-year-old Ocean had both her ears amputated to prevent the spread of skin cancer. Hello, Ocean. Hello, baby. You OK? Vet Laura is checking she's OK before her owners, twins Shireen and Shireel Scott, can take her home. Even though Ocean's in her ears, she's still going to be gorgeous. She's yeah. a gorgeous cat. She's our gorgeous cat. <laughs> she's still going to be cute and she's still going to have that crazy wave at her. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you know where to go now? Clever. Clever girl. That's fine. Yeah, I can't wait to see her. Yeah, every time the door opens, I'm like, Ocean. <laughs> You're going to go home now. Just make sure that you have had all your medication there. OK, let's go. Come on, puppet. The suspense is killing me. <laughs> Here she comes. She's happy to see you. Hey, Ocean. I'm very happy with the result. There's no uh, repercussions as well on the on the hearing as well. She should be okay, hearing the same. Okay. Luckily, we caught it really early, so it shouldn't be any problems. Mm -hmm. So it was a pleasure to treat Ocean today. He's a very nice cat, uh, lovely temperament, and very calm, very good patient. Yeah. She was really good. The purring little patient will need to wear her collar for the next 10 to 12 days and also have daily painkillers. Right, Ocean, you're going to go now and hope you're OK, all right? Goodbye, Ocean. Big wave. Thank you so much, and I might see you in checkup. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Bye. Yeah, I'm glad that she's okay. Yeah. And she's been a good girl. We did say she was a good girl. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like she'll be getting a double dose of cuddles when she gets home. Coming up. There we go. Gosh, but she's matted underneath. Dorothy, the matted Persian, finally gets clipped. I'm literally going to shave all of that fur off, because unfortunately there's not what else I can do with it. And we find out what happened to the cat flu kitten with a 50-50 chance of survival. <music> Inspector Rosie Russon has just picked up the Persian cat with a matted coat. The kitty is in the safe hands of vet Bruce McCleary for dematting under sedation. In the past, Dorothy hasn't responded well to having her tummy groomed, so she's taken into the surgery where she's given a mild anaesthetic. She's also intubated, so vet nurse Katie Piper can monitor her vital signs while she's under sedation. I'm literally going to shave all of that fur off, because unfortunately there's not what else I can do with it. But immediately Bruce can see there's another itchy issue Dorothy's been living with. There's a lot of flea dirt in amongst her fur, so clearly she's had fleas as well, which in a way that's both the cause and the result of the problem, because the longer your fur is, the more the chances are that the fleas are going to stick there because you can't actually lick them out. Poor Dorothy must have been in even more discomfort than Rosie thought. Now let's sort out what's going on in front here. Katie, okay, so you want to just hold that leg up for me? Thank you. But at least those big old mats are now coming off. Dorothy's having what's known as a lion cut, keeping just the fur on her feet, face and tail. Here we go. Just like a different cat. I think she certainly looks like a more comfortable cat now. Mm. Dorothy's neck wound will heal quickly, 
and it shouldn't take more than a few weeks for her fur to grow back. Let's wake up. We do need to be thinking about brushing her, and that's on a daily basis. And the other thing we actually need to do is make sure that her flea control is also very good. Dorothy needs a bit of time to come round from her sedation, and Katie's there to keep an eye on her while she does. So we're just making sure that she wakes up nice and calmly. Hopefully, it shouldn't take too long. I should be awake and feeling much better with a great new haircut. A few months on, and she's made a great recovery. Dorothy's been getting on really well. Everyone loves her. She's a really pretty, sweet cat. She did have a bit of a sensitive stomach, but that's settled. Um, she's obviously been shaved now, so she's free of all the mats. So she's a lot more comfortable. That's one bit of good news. Time to find out if there's going to be more. So Dorothy is very lucky. She has found the right owner that is definitely willing to carry on with this grooming. I'm going to be very sad to see her go, but very happy at the same time that actually she's much more comfortable in herself, with no more mats, and have a lovely home. Yes, let's go and meet your new owners. Hello. Hello. This is your Dorothy. Hello, Dotty. Is that going to be her new nickname, Dotty? It is. She's going to be called Dotty because I can't call a cat Dorothy. <laughs> Dotty's haircut when we first saw her was pretty radical. She looked like this little lion. She had the mane and not much else, really. I thought it looked quite adorable. You just had this big fluffy head and nothing else and instantly it made me want to look after her. Hello, Dotty. You're going home. Dotty. Are you going to come to the madhouse? When we take Dottie home, we're hoping she fits in really well. Our house is a little bit of a madhouse. We have plenty of rescue animals, so we currently have three cats, now four with Dottie, and four rescue reptiles as well. So we're hoping that her personality keeps coming out and she's as mad as the rest of us. She's ready to go, so do you want to grab your Lovely. basket? Absolutely well. We'll see if we can get you in here. You add in the camera. Go on then, you can go in there. Good girl. I think Dorothy, with her differences to my other pets, with the fact that she's going to need that more contact with grooming, um, she'll fit right in. I don't currently have a lap cat, they're all quite independent. So hopefully she's going to enjoy that attention and it'll be that little bit more fun and a bit more company. All right, well, let's get you home then. Great news. I do love a happy ending. Hershey Bowl rescued five critically ill stray kittens from a back garden. OK. I know. I know. Sadly for four of them, their cat flu was so advanced they had to be put to sleep. But there was one kitten who was given a 50-50 chance of survival. Just cleaning away any of the nasty debris that he's got round his eyes just to make him feel a bit more comfortable. Great. So, did he make it? We're delighted to say that he did. And six weeks on, the little survivor who beat the odds has been given the very apt name of Rocky. He was really timid, but we got him to play with us and we really liked him. He was really playful. This little fighter has found a new home with Summer Carr and Lewis Daniels. And he also has a new sister too, Poppy. We know that he's lost his siblings, so we wanted him to have another kitten to, like, learn from and play with. He's non-stop adrenaline fueled. like, uh, he wears us all out. <laughs> Don't think he realises, like, how strong he is as well, compared to Poppy. Energetic Rocky also has a sporting interest. No, not boxing. When we try and play a game of pool, the cat always jumps on the table. It makes the game quite interesting, like, anyone can win, like, even the cat. Yeah, <laughs> and he does win. Yeah. Well, of course he does. After a rocky start, sorry, he's definitely winning at life. It's doing really well. It's just, just a normal, playful cat. Well, fairly normal. Cheers, Rocky. Nice mug. Now, 
as this show is all about cats and kittens, I and the rest of the team get to meet the cutest of the cute week after week. I mean, just look at these three. They're going to be the stars of today's shoot, the all-important title sequence for the show. Let's hope they behave themselves. I know from bitter experience just how tricky working with naughty moggies can be. Because they are alive, it's almost impossible to uh, just make them do what you want them to do. Can we get Joe into position? Next to the bowl like this, and then the kittens hopefully will be just dotted along here. Um, There's eating quite them. massive potential for them to fall off. <laughs> Who's going to be kitten catchers? With someone assigned to kitten catching duties, I'm about to go head to head with our little stars. First to join me on set is confident Ginger Phil. Little Sam doesn't look so keen, though. Um, do you want this one? Uh, yeah. What do they say about children and animals? They don't seem to want food. Do they not want any food? So just see what they do if you let them go. That probably wasn't the best idea. Hey, man. <laughs> <laughs> One's in. Quick, get the other one in. Just throw it in. And our highly technical way of getting their attention? Bash a couple of bowls together. It does actually work. No, stop at the bowl, Phil. You're not irreplaceable, you know. Action. Come back here, Phil. With a lot of perseverance, we do get there in the end. Lovely. I think we've got it. Right. Well done, you're a star. <laughs> well done, kittens. Well done, everyone. Well done, Joe. Thank Thanks, you. Thanks, Joe. Next time, it's a high-rise rescue for Inspector Sam Durrant. Good boy. We're going to get you. Inspector Claire Dew gets some well-deserved thanks. Don't give you a hug. Of course you can give me a hug. I can probably count on one hand in 15 years as an inspector how many times I've been hugged by someone who said thank you. And I learn the magic way to make a cat move its leg. You scratch, actually, his ear. There is a reflectance. Uh. <laughs>